So blood pressure readings taken while you sit at your doctor's office isn't always as important as you think. In this video, I'll explain why this is and how to get more accurate blood pressure readings. I'm Dr. Khaled, a family doctor from London. Let's dive straight in. Now, blood pressure is a useful screening tool as part of our examination to help tell us how your body is doing. And if it's high, it can be a significant risk factor for things like heart attacks and strokes. But when we do it in a clinic setting, this isn't often an accurate representation of what your blood pressure is doing day to day. So for example, last week I took my son to his doctor's appointment. First of all, we had to wake up earlier than usual. We had to do all of that morning routine much quicker. So we had to do his brushing of his teeth, breakfast, getting him in the car. And then there's the morning traffic that you have to get through to get to the appointment. And then once you're finally there, you need to find parking, which was impossible. So on that day, we ended up actually going down the road, parking further away, rushing to get in time for that doctor's appointment. Now, all of that extra stress and effort can push a person's blood pressure up. Now, you also have to factor in that some people are a little bit nervous about seeing the doctor. We doctors don't bite, but we can understand why people may get nervous. They may have never mentioned a symptom to anyone before, or they may be talking about mental health problems. And other times the doctor might be running late, which is more often than not and the patient may be stuck in a crowded, stressful, busy waiting room. So as you can see, it's quite different to your average morning where you may have a nice cup of tea in the morning just to chill you out. Hopefully not spill it over yourself. In fact, they've coined a phrase for it and it's called white coat syndrome, even though doctors don't really wear white coats anymore. And the idea was that when you go and see your lovely doctor, your blood pressure would be high. So even if I don't wear a white coat, the effect is much the same. Now, do I still check people's blood pressure in the clinic if the history suggests it? Absolutely. Say someone has a headache and their blood pressure is super high, 220 over 130. Of course, being in a clinic and the pain of the headache is pushing the blood pressure a little bit higher, but that kind of high reading would alarm me and I'd think about, you know, sending him into hospital because that would absolutely guide my initial management. Now, if you want to know why I'd be sending that patient in, this video up here somewhere will discuss what low, normal, high and very high blood pressures are, so have a click on that. Likewise, if someone is unwell and has a temperature, shivery, and they have a very low blood pressure, again, I would be a bit more worried about that patient. So it can absolutely be useful for us. But when is it not useful? And when you are trying to diagnose high blood pressure or hypertension, what you need to do is have an idea of what that person's blood pressure is doing on an average day-to-day -day basis, not a one-off reading at one moment in time. Like you wouldn't be checking somebody's blood pressure if they are skydiving and then be like, yo, gee, that's, that's a super high blood pressure. Let's just start you on a medication straight away. So how do we get accurate blood pressure readings to diagnose high blood pressure? Well, there are two ways to do it and I'll tell you which one is my slightly preferred way. The very first one is to ask your local practice for a 24-hour blood pressure monitor. And that's basically a monitor you wear on your arm and it pop it on and then it just like inflates every hour over 24 hours. It probably doesn't let you sleep much. And what you do is you get like a tally of what your blood pressure is doing and the machine will calculate what your average readings are. Now, most clinics will have a few of these and there's usually a bit of a waiting list to get one of these to take home. And also remember, if you're having sex while you're having the machine on, well, we kind of know as clinicians because you'll see a flat graph and then you'll see your heart rate and your blood pressure go up. And then a minute later, it shoots back down or however long it takes. Now, the other way and the way that I encourage for my patients is to actually own a blood pressure monitor. I normally ask them to take two weeks worth of readings, maybe do a reading every day, alternate the times, do a morning one day, do an afternoon another day, do an evening, and then making sure that they're sitting down for at least five minutes before they do their blood pressure reading. I also advise them to take three readings and then jot down the average one of those. And then after two weeks, I book them an appointment. They come in with their diary. We have a look at it together and then we can make a decision what to do next. I would obviously counsel them about what is a normal, low, high blood pressure. And I feel this kind of involves the patient more. They're more aware of their readings rather than popping a machine in and finding out if it's high or not later on. So as well as that empowerment, it's also quite good when you start people on medication 
patients because once they're taking it, you need to monitor their blood pressure to see if it's responding. And these blood pressure monitors are fairly cheap. They're about 20 to 30 pounds from your local pharmacy or Amazon. If you do want a PDF of a blood pressure diary, which you can use to record all your blood pressure readings, then that will be in the description below. I'd also recommend clicking on the next blood pressure video, which goes through what the measurements actually mean and when you should be worried. Have a lovely day and peace out.